Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Omar. Um, I'm a flight school owner here in Orange County, California. Today we're gonna talk about what happens if you get the message, advise and ready to copy, phone number, possible pilot deviation. It's not anymore. I've gotta get out of here. I've gotta get out of here. Calm down, get a hold of yourself. Stewardess, please let me handle this. I've gotta get out of here. Calm down, now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Don't do your one on the phone. Everything's gonna be all right. Sister, please handle this. I've gotta get out of here. I've gotta get out of here. I've gotta get out of here. Uh, so I have here one of our instructors from the school. This is Kyle. He's been instructing for us for a few months now, four or five months. So a couple days ago, one of his students got that message on one of his solo cross countries. Saturday, 81, 68, uh, possible pilot deviation. Uh, I'd ready to copy uh, the phone number. Carry uh, code 773 Got it, thank you. I wanted to take an opportunity to talk about it with you guys, um, teach you you know what what's involved, what does it look like, what happens, and kind of just overall give you guys an informative process. So I'll kind of like talk to him about it. So Kyle, uh, obviously not the uh, the news you want to hear. So your your student was going from here on a solo cross country to Camarillo. Along the way, I guess um, the student uh, was told to maintain a certain altitude and um, didn't maintain the altitude, kept climbing, and SoCal Approach said, hey, I told you to maintain that altitude. Um, I think he was given that instruction due to conflicting traffic. Yeah. So another plane was kind of in his way. And so from the debris, from what we learned, the student got distracted when he was supposed to level off at that altitude. And so that's why he kind of kept climbing through it. Yeah. Um, so, when the student got to uh, the, the destination airport, he called you. Obviously, he was a little, little worried about it. Yeah. Um, what, what advice did you give the student at that point? Because he was obviously having to come back to John Wayne. What, what did you tell the student at that point? I just told him to finish the flight like normal. Just stick to his training, and we'll worry about it later. Yeah, just kind of calm his nerves. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, it's not something we want to, we want to see or hear. Yeah. But at the end of the day, tell him like. It's okay, man. It's it's not the end of the world. We'll take care of it when you get back, because you don't you don't want to have that information get into his head and start you know distracting him even more. So he gets another possible pilot deviation yeah. on the way back, right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he flew back uneventful, landed, and then obviously you guys called SoCal Approach together. Yep. And just you kind of just walked him through it. And what what did what was the phone call? Kind of what was it like? Yeah, so we called SoCal, they basically, the guy listened to the tapes, uh, we gave him our statement, he listened to the tapes, basically said total non-event, basically said don't let it happen again, just comply with the rules and uh, um, don't lose any sleep over it. Right. Uh, one thing I want to point out, guys, is if you have a professional attitude, if you're respectful of the controller, if you're cooperative, if, if you show that professional courtesy to the controller, that's most of the time the result of these phone calls. A lot of people like, they get freaked out and they go, oh my God, I got a phone number to call. If you're, if you're nice, professional, and you're, you're you know, you, you talk to the other person with the professional courtesy and respect, that's gonna be most of the result of these phone calls. Um, but if you talk to the guy like the, the the guy going into Las Vegas McCarran Airport busting the Bravo did. Yeah. I'm gonna throw up a little example of that right now for you guys. I'm one of them, a Romeo, I need you outside of the Bravo. Negative. A negative what? I'm inside. You were not given a clearance through the Bravo. One of them, a Romeo, exit the Bravo immediately. I've been talking to you the whole time. That's the whole point of talking to you. You have to have a Bravo clearance. You have to request a Bravo clearance. The Bravo clearance about 50 miles ago. Nobody clears you through the Bravo but me. Then clear me through. No. 
If you talk to the controller in that way, I guarantee you the result of that phone call is not gonna be the result that he got. The result is gonna be, um, you know, they're not, there's gonna be barely any discussion and then the controller is gonna refer the matter to the local FISDO. The FISDO is the Flight Standards District Office. They're your local FAA office with safety inspectors there that are there to handle cases like this and decide whether or not to take certificate action against you and your license. Um, your goal is to never let the conversation get past the phone call to the FISDO. You gotta handle it right then and there. And how's that gonna, how do you do that? Professional professionalism, courtesy, respect. You know, tell him it was a learning lesson. Make sure he understands you learn from it. You're not going to do it again. Cooperate, graduate. Um, the controllers are not out to get you. They're genuinely there to help you as a pilot get to where you need to go safely. They're not. Their intention is never to punish you or penalize you. They just want to talk to you and be like, hey, I just want to make sure you guys understand what you did was not supposed to happen and we're not going to have this again. Yes, end of story. Um, if you get a phone, phone number, I've seen people do this, and you ignore the phone number, well, then they're going to send you a certified letter in the mail and they're going to start taking certificate action against you with or without you uh, responding to them. Um, if it's really bad, they'll send you a emergency letter revoking your license until the investigation's complete. It really just depends on how bad it was and what you did. So yeah, so you talk to your student about it, he's, he's okay, you're gonna give him some retraining and then have him go again, yeah? Yep. Awesome. Kyle, thanks for doing this interview. I know it's kind of a little bit, not everybody wants to talk about these sensitive topics, but yeah. I assured Kyle that you know, we're not, we're going to talk about it in an educational, informative way so that other students in the industry can learn because this is stuff that I've always been open with, like, hey, let's talk about what I did wrong so the next person can learn. Yeah. A lot of people get a little bit shy about that because, you know, obviously they don't want to look, you know, in a certain way. So mm -hmm. I appreciate your, uh, your candidness and helping us out with the video in the audience. Yep. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.